Now that we have our Google Sheets workbook talking with TypeBot, the next thing that we need to do is set up all the logic that goes into the TypeBot. I'll be providing the JSON to this specific demo. So you can use this video as a reference if you get stuck, or perhaps you want to figure out a little bit more about how each of these pieces work. So let's step through this TypeBot flow. If we enter a zip code that isn't in our Google Sheets, what we're doing here is doing a get request from our Google Sheets workbook. And then we're creating the set variable block to verify if that zip code exists within our Google Sheets. If it does exist, that means we have at least one vendor that can provide the service. If it doesn't exist, then we're going to ask the user if we can add it and then notify them after we add it. If we zoom out, we can see that the user has a couple of options. They can either elect to be notified after we add it or not. If they do want to be notified, then we say, great, what's your email? The user puts in their email, and then this sets off a notification via email to me or the TypeBot admin to then say, hey, add the zip code, and then notify the user when you update the zip code. However, if the user selects no, then we say no problem, and then we say try entering a different zip code to see if we have service. And then that points them back to this particular block in the sequence. On the other hand, if the user puts in a zip code where we do have a service provider, then we say, great, we have service in your zip code. And then we'll begin asking them a series of questions about their project. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel. I literally just ripped the questions and options from HomeAdvisor. So you can kind of set this up whatever is most relevant to you. After the user inputs the information about their project, we pull up the top rated companies based off of the zip code that the user selected. So to test this out, I just put in some dummy data. As you can see here, the zip code I put in is 11111. And based off of the zip codes, it pulls in these two companies as a selection. So as the question says here, select the companies you would like to get a quote from. So here the user can select one or all of the different companies and then continue on to the next step. Before we continue, I do want to highlight something from this set variable block where we pull in the company names that relate to the user's zip code. So going to the set variable block, let's expand this a little bit. First, we need to parse the JSON object. So in other words, the data that we're pulling in from the Google Sheets API. And we do this because with TypeBot, you can't save an object as an object type, a variable. It's actually saved as a text string. So to convert the text string of the object over to an object type, which we need in order to grab the data from the Google Sheets API, we need to use this json.parse method. Similarly, when the user enters their zip code, it actually comes in as a number. So we need to convert that as a text string because otherwise this lookup won't work. So after we parse the JSON data and then convert the postal code from a number to a string, now we can access the values from the JSON object and then properly verify the user's input for the zip code matches our data table in Google Sheets. For your particular case, you're probably going to do something different and you might get stuck. When that happens, what I recommend doing is going over to ChatGPT and asking it for extreme detail information about the code that you're trying to resolve. That's worked for me pretty well. All right, moving on to the final stretch of this TypeBot sequence. We're just going to ask for the first name of the user, their email, their phone number, and then from there, we're going to blast off the emails to the particular vendors or service providers that they selected. So let's go ahead and open up the email block. By the way, there's a number of different ways you can do this. For example, another interesting option is to create an email using the user's email client. So that would entail using a link like mail to pull in and then passing in the user's email along with BCCing the list of service provider emails accompanied with the subject title and the body of the email. I did something like this in a different TypeBot and you can see how I put it together right here. 
So once you put together that mail to link, then we do a redirect using that mail to link, which then opens up the user's email client, like Gmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever. Anyway, that's a different option that you have. But in this example, what I'm using is the email block within TypeBot. And then I'm putting the reply to as the user's email. So once the service provider receives the email, they can just reply directly to the end consumer or the end user. And then for this variable called company emails, I would actually move that to BCC. That way each service provider can't see what other companies have been contacted. And then finally, you put in your subject and then the different values that the user input, like the project details and so forth. And this last part is optional. For instance, what I wanted to do after the user finishes the type out sequence is to list out the service providers that are going to be contacted on their behalf. In order to make this work, what we need to do is set this set variable block that you see here and then set this company's array to be joined using this method. So as you can see in this simple example, we're taking this array that has these two companies and then just combining it as a text string. If you don't do that, then the output of that company array is just going to display the first company. And that's it for this type bot sequence. The user fills out some details about their project, they select some top rated vendors based off of Google Maps data, and then they can blast off email requests to these service providers to get quotes in one go. That's it for this demo. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, I'm more than welcome them in the comments below. Until then, see you in the next video.